From Valdewar for Cage Side Press, here with Tyrell Fortune, who's taken on Sergei Bilasteni at Bellator 294 on Friday, April 21st in Honolulu. So, Tyrell, how are you, man? Like, good camp and everything? Yeah, great camp. So, I feel good. I'm ready to go. I feel like uh, I feel like I'm back to where I should be as far as, like, training and um, how I feel. What was making you not be where you felt like you should be? Uh, I think just the, the timing of of everything and how jammed it every just the timing of everything just what didn't feel, didn't feel good you mean like cause you've had like a really condensed schedule you fought i think it's 12 this will be your 12th fight in like four years or something eight fights yeah. in like three years that's what you mean right yeah yeah so it's just uh i think that was a lot and um it's a lot to handle professionally and personally yeah. so different different things you go through on both sides of it so now just trying to in a better place and finding balance, I think is a is better. I'm more in a better position, better space. Yeah, that's awesome. So, in the future, you'd like to maybe limit it to like one one or two fights a year, not three or four. Fuck no, fuck no. <laughs> I, I still want to fight three or four more. Times. Okay. I, I, no, yeah, no, no. I'm not saying I want to let, take the foot off the pedal at all. I I, I think um, for me, perch, I need I need to fight three times a year. Like I need to. Like I need to. I need that. Why? Why is that? Just to keep like moving forward, like keep your eye on the prize. I need to compete. Like I'm a competitor, and if I'm not, I can't just train for so long and not be able to to test what I've been training. So for you know, so for me, this sport is too brutal with the training for you not to be able to be like, okay, let me let go on somebody. Let me see where I'm at. And whether I win or lose, I need to still see where I'm at because it's just you. It's the this sport, the grind of this sport doesn't come from the fights. It comes from the training camps. That's that's the harder than the fight, any fight. So uh, I think that's that's why, you know, I, I feel like I, with all the training I have to do, I want to fight at least three times a year. I'd fight fucking four or five if I could, <laughs> if they would let me. Yeah, I mean, you got to let the body heal sometimes, though. Right, but if, if all I was doing was fighting, I could, yeah. I could let it heal then, you know. Let me yeah. fight every two, three months. For True. sure, I'll I'll train my ass off and just fight and heal, fight and heal. <laughs> it's good. So, all right, this guy Sergey Bilasteni, I think I'm saying that right. It's a hard one to say. Yeah, everybody's been uh, working on it today. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna just say Bilasteni. So, he's your phone coming up. <laughs> he's not had that much like footage available of him. I, I checked on YouTube and stuff. There's a couple, but not not definitely not his whole career. Like you know, you fought in Bellator your whole career. You fought you know, mostly top 10 Bellator light or Bellator heavyweights in your career, especially in recent years, since, you know, you really picked it up and descended in the rankings. And he's mostly fought in Eastern Europe, obviously not in America. Um, what are the challenges of like preparing to fight a guy like that who you can't see everything? I, I checked for his losses. Neither of his losses, the same guy are online that I could find. Yeah. Um, well, we got three of his fights. So um, to me, I think that's, that's plenty to, because uh, you're not really, you know, you're just watching, looking for habits, you know, looking for mistakes and openings and see where you see some flaws and weaknesses. So it's, uh, I think to me, that's plenty, um, you know, and if you don't have any at all, then it's a fight. So fuck it, you better be paying attention and figure it out on the fly. Because, uh, you know, even still, I always think, you know, like he can be a completely different guy that I see in that cage when, when the fight starts. So I, I have to be ready for that. I can't go in there with just one solid game plan, like, this is what it's going to be, this is how it's going to be, because that shit can be, can get thrown out right when the fight starts. So, um, no, I, I think that's just how you look, uh, how I look at it. Yeah, I mean, you talk about mistakes. Uh, I, I checked out his last fight, um, which is, you know, he had a bunch of knockouts and then this one split decision. He got real tired in it late, late in round two especially. The guy was, like, clinching him up, wrestling him a bit. Is that, that kind of what you're expecting, to be able to go in there? take him into deep waters where, you know, you can do that to him, wrestle him, make him tired and, and take him out. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to expose it right away. See what depends on what, you know, what happens. Like I said, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I'm going to look to expose his weaknesses as, as soon as possible. All right. A any others you should know about? Or are you keeping that close, close to the vest? Trying not to, what's that? any other weaknesses that, that you've noticed? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, no, I mean, shit, this is, is wrestling. He gets tired. Uh, I think I'm faster than he is on the feet anyway. So, um, 
I'm not, there's not much, you know, honestly, there's not much really I'm, I'm worried too much about. I just got to be smart. I think every fighter is obviously dangerous and has a, presents a, 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 um, a different challenge. But I think with the skills I bring to the table, I, if I'm smart and handle everything correctly, it should be an easy fight. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, talking about that, you've been fighting some real tough guys. I mean, you fought guys like Lindsay Vassal, who's probably the next heavyweight title challenger, whereas Sergey has been fighting. I mean, not bad guys by any means, but not guys that are in like the top 10 Bellator rankings type. Um, and you've been doing that for years. Do you think that he's ready for this step up in competition? Like, it's a pretty big step up. Um, shit, I, I don't care. <laughs> 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 honestly you know i give two shits if you ready or not you know um, it's just you know they presented the fight i say I don't, I don't turn down fights you know i've been saying that from the start um so i i just fight whoever they they ask me to fight you know obviously i always have preferred preferred uh fights that i would like but that doesn't always happen that's not really my job my job is to, to beat up the guy they put in front of me so i try to stick to that hey when when you're fighting three four times a year you can't beat a client in fights <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah, I try that's why that's the only reason why I fight though I've gotten been able to fight that many times is because I do that. So uh so I met, mentioned Linton Vassal. If you fought it was a you know, you fought him tight split decision. Some people had it for him, some people had it for you, but you dropped it and now he's probably next for the title and he's gonna be fighting Ryan Bader, who I've heard you've trained with before. Um mm -hmm. so I was wondering who you think is gonna get that, is gonna win that fight and you know, have the belt. Man, um I don't know, you know. I don't. I don't know. I trained. Uh, I trained with Bader before, and I've trained with Linton before too. Um, so I know. I know them both very well. Um, they are both tough fighters. Linton is is a is a is a, is a hard guy to deal with. Um, he's gotten a lot better with his wrestling, mm -hmm. but um, they fought before, and Bader was able to take him down and control him with the wrestling. I don't know if uh, if um. Linton can stop Bader from wrestling like he did last time. Obviously, when when you wrestle a guy like that, um, you have and you have a lot of success with it, you're gonna go back to it again. But uh, Linton is strong as shit. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so uh, he's not. If you if you get in the wrong wrestling position with him, it could be a, a easy reversal. So I don't know. I really at this at this time with these guys' careers and what what Linton's been doing and how how uh, Bader fights too as well. I, that's a still that's a coin flip, so I can't really give you my my call on that fight. Yeah, I mean Linton's, he's a unique one with his yeah, like you said, the wrestling's not it's getting better, but the grappling, I don't know, mm -hmm. his positions are insane. Like some of the stuff he's able to do. Oof. All right, so uh, the the event Bellator two ninety four is in Hawaii. It's a beautiful place. I checked. I went through all the fights, like all your fights. I don't think you fought there before. You're gonna be you like, you excited to go? You like gonna be able to make time to see the sights? I mean, that's always a place I've always wanted to go. Uh, no, um, I don't really do that much <laughs> at, during fight week anyway. But um, I don't like islands. Um, I don't like big bodies. I don't like being uh, in the ocean. So um, for me, uh, I won't be going around too much. I'll, I'll try to go around a little bit. We'll see how I get there. Hopefully, I don't have any uh, bad episodes or nothing. But um, no, nah, I'm gonna be chilling. <laughs> not a not a fan of like flying over the water. No, nah, I won't be looking out the water, out the out the plane at all. Is that just what? Is that just like over water or like any plane ride for you? Uh, no, just over water. Hmm. Big bodies of water like that. Yeah, I just don't like the ocean. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, so I wanted to switch lanes a little bit and talk about, I mean, talk about fighting a lot, of course, but I wanted to, like, give people a chance to get to know you outside of fighting, too. Um, Like, like, what do you, like, I mean, you sound like fighting is, mo like, com competing is what you do, like, what you love to do, like, the most. But what do you do outside of that? Like, do you, do you have, like, something, like, hobbies you do to chill, relax? Take a uh, snowboard. Off? Snowboard. Snowboarding? That's, uh, yeah, snowboarding. That's, that's pretty much the only other thing I've been doing uh, outside of fighting. I hit the, I hit a, uh, Colorado again this year. Um, I got a sick ass board, a new board this year, which is a a Lib Tech, which I was I was fucking it up. I got I got nasty with it at the end of the, at the end of the season. So I'm hoping that after this fight, I can get get a couple more runs again after um after this fight because I had to stop. Obviously, once I knew I was gonna get ready to fight again, I had to stop and get back get off the board. But uh, that's really what, the one thing I want to do if I can get back on the board again and 
maybe this year go somewhere internationally out of the country in a board. That's that's probably something I'm looking forward to do this this winter. But um no, the snowboarding is that's that's really it. That's awesome. Well, where where would you want to go internationally? You have like a like the Alps or something? Yeah, the Alps, Switzerland, you know, somewhere out there. Japan, Japan got some sick ass oh. mountains. Or uh Tokyo, right? Yeah, that's Japan, yeah, Tokyo, Japan. Yeah. So yeah, anywhere anywhere over there. That, that that that's a big famous spot to go with nice mountains. I want to get on it and try it out. See it. That's dope. Um. So I so you do skateboarding. You like you, you watch much sports. You watch skateboarding. You watch team sports. Oh no no snowboarding just snowboarding just snowboarding like uh, nothing else. Yeah. That is yeah, snowboarding yeah, no, no, and MMA. Yeah. Well, I mean, I watch basketball. Basketball, yeah. I would say, is my other passion. But once Kobe, now that Kobe's out and he died. Mm, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm not too invested, but I watch the. I'm from Portland, so I watch the Blazers when I can. And uh, but I would say, yeah, basketball and fighting, really, man. That's really, I, I watch fighting. That's it, you know. Like that's uh, yeah, my main focus. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Nuggets guy myself. We're killing it this year for once. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what what fighter? Like, is there any specific fighter you credit with making you want to do MMA? Or even combat sports in general, because obviously you started out wrestling. Any wrestle one wrestler that was like, as a kid, you're like, this is the guy. This is who I want to be. Um, no, I mean, I never had any aspirations to fight at all. Uh, so I didn't know I was gonna be be fighting. I didn't know I was gonna be here in this position. I was wrestling, and when I made the world team, that was like that was my goal. So um, when Bellator presented me with this opportunity, it just uh. It kind of seemed surreal at first, but um, no, I just kind of took it because I f- it felt like it was the next best thing, and um, I'm I'm, I'm that's what I'm here now, you yeah. know. So uh, that's uh, that was really I never had a, nobody I really look up to, but as now as being a fighter and what you know growing as a fighter, there's the the fighter I would say I take from the most from his style is DC, just because I feel like the uh, he's in the um his style is very much particular to mine and our backgrounds are very particular too. So, uh, cause I'm a shorter, uh, heavyweight, smaller type heavyweight. I think his, his, the way he goes at the game is how I'll try to look at it a little bit. And, um, so, um, I would say his, his style is the most one I, I look at the most, but, um, I, I, I take stuff from everybody, you know, um, this, the game, this, this is a martial art game. So there's so much to, that you can take from, every fighter and, and, and add to your game or take away. So there's not really anybody I can't exclude from that list. So you're like a, a true student of the game. Like you're, you're always watching and, you know, picking stuff out. I don't miss, I don't miss fights. Any fights, like every promotion, like all the big ones. Uh, well, ma- mainly UFC and Bellator. Yeah. UFC, Bellator, PFL. That's because all my, all my friends that I know that fight too. So now uh, a bunch of wrestlers now that fight. So, PFL, Bellator, and UFC, I don't miss those cards. And I catch one FC every now and then too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you say DC's like is DC like your favorite guy to well, like entertainment. So for me, I'm like the most the most violent guy, like Justin Gaethje, you know, like guys like that. Oh, yeah. Who's no, your no. who's your like favorites to watch? Yes. Yeah. So I Justin Gaethje's one of them. Um Kamaru Usman, uh Gilbert Burns. Mm-hmm. Luke Vicente Luque is fucking food. So yeah. clean. Um man, that that nigga's nice. I was just watching another one of his fights last night. He is he is nice. Um got that left hook. Yeah. Um Chandler, Chandler's Chandler's a good one to, to watch as well. Um Adesanya, his movement, the his particular uh skill set is very different than I think a lot of people. So he, uh, I think he's more of a in the entertainment factor, of like the the wow of like, damn, the fighters can do this type of shit. But his, his basic, he does a lot of intricate basic shit that I don't think a lot of people pick up. That his with his feints and his hand movements and his his uh, his head movements that he a lot of traps that he sets that he's doing a lot of basic shit that I, I think I pick up from boxing. You know, I try to watch a lot more boxing. My coach has me watching a lot of boxers and shit. So. Mm. Um, Guys like Mike Tyson, Floyd, Roy Jones Jr. Roy, we watch a lot of Roy. Um, so, all, 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 all fighters is uh, I think, like I said, present a lot. Max Holloway, mm. and that that dude's real nice. Fucking Peter Young, 
Um, Corey Sanhagen. Oh, yeah. Boy, that. Ooh, Corey Sanhagen. <laughs> that nigga is nice. The, his, again, another guy doing, he's doing so much in, on a, just on, on a little level, little skill that I don't think a lot of fighters pick up with his feints, his foot movement, his placement is everything is thought out. Yeah. Everything is thought out. So it's, it's, it's those guys like that that I watch. I'm just like, motherfucker. Like yeah. that, those are, those are guys I think that are firing at the highest on this, in this, in this game is guys like Corey Sanhagen. And um, it, when you're able to perform and, and you're, you can tell he's, he's meticulously planned out every aspect of his game. He's switching stance. Everything doesn't change. It's, a mirror image. So it's, he's a the guys like that is who I try to watch and and uh, learn a little bit of stuff from because I feel like with my skill set is very different from theirs. So I have everything to learn from it as yeah. far as when it comes to the the feet and the hands and kicks and knees and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's great. I mean taking it from everywhere, boxing, kickboxing. These little guys, these big guys. DC, Corey Sanhagen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to take up like too much of your time. I, usually they'll tell me, but. uh yeah, it's just been awesome talking to you, man. I mean, yeah, I, I, I like the way you're approaching this. Uh, it's just awesome. I can't wait to see what you do out there. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Have a good one, man. You too.